Welcome to the Weekly Hijack. Hello, everyone. This is Once Upon a Time edition, the season finale of season five? Five, I believe, yes. yes. Two, which was actually made up of two episodes, Only You and An Untold Story. All right. So we were very cautious going into this, and I have to say, on almost all accounts, this paid off very well. Yeah, no, it was it was actually a lot of fun. And poor trailer last week, but I'm, I'm, I'd rather have a poor trailer than a poor episode. No, you're right. I think that's you're you're correct. It was a fun episode. It recaptured a lot of that, like why I liked once originally. You know, new mm-hmm. worlds, new characters, everyone just kind of doing things, and you know, some some interesting talk about good and evil, and like and f- fun ideas. Like, Mm -hmm. I I loved... First off, Henry's plan to go get rid of magic, which was, I remember thinking that was one of the interesting ideas from the trailer. And I I love that that was the main focus of of a lot of this. And it was just, I mean, his reasoning made perfect sense. It was a very Henry thing to do. And and I'm always excited when they have an exciting plot line for Henry. (laughs) Henry, and what what was great about it is that he was... He, like, basically chewed everyone out at some point, <laughs> which was great. He's finally standing on – you know, he chewed out Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> who, who totally deserves it. So yeah. we need more good Henry. Yes. I mean, seriously, guys, <laughs> give him something to do. Yeah. Be like, let him be an – like, they tried to do that at the end of last season, mm-hmm. and it was – Okay, but this worked, this worked better. Yeah, this is one of the best Henry stories I think we've ever seen. Yeah, and I've always wanted a good Henry story, so I was very satisfied with that. <laughs> Henry slash author, a little yeah. bit of both. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I know that's so great. Like, he just says, and it appears in his hand, and he takes it. Like, <laughs> you just the number of times Rumpel was like hoodwinked that uh, this episode was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Speaking of, we'll we'll, we'll be jumping around yeah. here a lot, but th- that moment where like he has a v- such a classic character moment where yeah. like. Something happens, and he has a split second of, should I grab this or should I grab the crystal? I better grab the crystal. It's so Rumpelstiltskin. It's bail fire all over again. got to get the power first. Power first. Especially this new uh, Rumpel 2.0, which is basically like, I'm done with this fighting in myself. Which has been a theme all season, largely, is becoming your true self. Yeah. And he's been early in the season. And then well, Zelina early found this it. half season. This half, yeah, yeah. And then Zelina did did it pretty late. And then you know yeah. they, they've they've established where he's at right now so much better now that I'm still not happy with the way they kind of hoodwinked us at the yeah. end of last season. But they've they've gone interesting places with it, and they played it well. They played it well, and I like the contrast between him and Regina. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk about the evil queen thing here, or do you want to uh, go back okay. to that? Sure, let's. We're we're there. Like I said, we're jumping off the place. Yeah. I don't mind this one as much, actually. No, because it, it, it's kind of fun because they respect the character growth that Regina has had, and maybe in their minds, Rumpelstiltskin hadn't quite achieved the same yeah. level of growth that he that yeah. Regina has. And so I like that. It's like we still want to play with the evil queen, but we want to respect what we, yeah. we've done with her. I, so. I, I, if I had one big disappointment, not big, but one may, my may, only real disappointment was. She got rid of the evil queen. I thought I really wasn't sure they were going to, mm-hmm. and then she shows up. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I think they can play it well. I just, I, I don't always like this. I kill them. Oh no, they're not really dead. Thing just in general. Yeah, I mean that's just a pet peeve. In gen- but it would be nice if they. I would hope that next season they would have some sort of explanation for. Wait, I crushed your heart. Yeah. <laughs> well, not only the explanation, but here's the thing. With Hyde taking over the town and all these new influx of new people, is it going to be too much? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, but anyways, that's my only really pretty minor complaint, all things considered. It was, it was not like the end of last half season. It no. was not that evil. You're right. It, they respected Regina. I thought Regina had some really, that long monologue in the first half she had with, or just, I don't know if it was a monologue. It was a discussion. Largely it was her. <laughs> yeah. Talking to um, Emma about her struggle and stuff. That was good stuff. Very good stuff. I mean, and it went on for a while. You don't, even in Once Upon a Time, you don't get that much monologue or dialogue yeah. usually that and you know that's like very soul i, I call it monologue because it's like yeah. it's almost shakespearean yeah. in the sense of i mean not the same language but you know what yeah. i mean the the kind of pouring out of what's what's inside you yeah. sort of idea i mean we had a little bit of that rumple earlier in the season but yeah regina and she's always been one of the more complicated characters yeah she, and, she's one of the few characters who can get away with that long of a speech yeah <laughs> so they played her really well this season end of last episode we're like Oh no, they'll make her the evil queen. And they never did. You know, and I love like even Rumpel's like, oh, I know you're not gonna do that now. You've changed it. Like, thank you. You know? <laughs> yes, that so was a big relief. It was this episode was fun, but it was also very logical in most ways. Like, hmm. you know, it didn't feel like they were cutting horrible corners or maybe the biggest stretch of the pennies in the pool, but it was it was played well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
it's hard not to have have a certain element of cheesiness is that sort yeah. of thing the you know i believe kind yeah. of stuff but if you're play, gonna play with the idea of like there's still magic here it's just kind of more well hidden i can sort of go with it yeah and they didn't they didn't overemphasize it you know they didn't have all the all everyone's like oh you know they, you you felt like or i felt like the audience was kind of just well, why not? It's you know, there's all kinds of crazy street performers in New York. Let's just go with it. And they even played that. Like they just thought it was an act. Yeah. Which I don't know. That that worked for me. It, I mean, it's a shame Tinkerbell didn't show up. But <laughs> for a little bit, I, I was really curious if they were going to like unleash magic on the rest of the world. Oh like, yeah. Well, because well, when they took the crystal out, I was like, ooh, they've got magic outside of Storybrook yeah. now. Where do they go with this? But no, I think they're back at Storybrook. They just that's their that's their safe area. Yeah. Well, and then you just have too many ramifications. Is very. I mean, how do you play that out and then? show like this it would it would change the whole dynamics too much it'd be like a hero's reborn yeah. sort of thing <laughs> speaking of interesting or fun scenes rumple ordering in in his hotel room <laughs> <laughs> yes we don't we don't often get just little goofy scenes like that <laughs> that was great yeah which so, again i i do i mean i understand yeah i agree the, the structure of once upon a time centers around storybook but whenever you get to go out, leave it for a while that's that you get a chance to do fun stuff no, like that no i i agree okay random this is not we're all over the place guys but um <laughs> The whole uh, Violet's dad being the Yankee in King Arthur's court is awesome. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I, I, and I like the, they're definitely moving toward expanding the show, I feel like, especially with the uh, the land of forgotten stories yeah. or whatever. And all the, all the once books everywhere. Yeah, and all the once books. I, I think as a sign they're definitely going to be expanding more into non fairy tale type stories. Yeah. I think, which they've dabbled a little bit, and they had Frankenstein. Frankenstein's about the only bit. one. Yeah, yeah. And what was nice, it set up at least that exists. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. very clever to have introduced Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde with this, you know, with particular theme here. With, of, yeah, battling your dark self. It's always interesting when they take that that sort of. Thing literally, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what Miss Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is all about, about yeah. but it was interesting to go from I've done all these things to no, there's an actual evil person inside <laughs> a literal evil person inside of me. That <laughs> and I mean, I guess that's a nice thing they did with her with Regine's monologue. She talked about it as if it was a separate entity, uh-huh. which helped set that whole thing up, right? And it was just a nice, it was nice to be in a land and we're like. What's going on? Well, what you is know? this? But yeah, it's not a. I like that it was. It was sort of a new land. It was Camelot or, yeah. or Wonderland or another world. It's just kind of this new place. If it was uh, like Kingdom Hearts, I'd say it was like Traverse Town. Yeah, like <laughs> they slipped through the cracks. So who, or I whatever. mean, the exciting thing about this too is who can we see next season? Yeah, well, and we saw like little glimpses of like Three Musketeers. <laughs> we thought Esmeralda, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Um, there was some, I remember seeing someone else like, oh, I bet that's yeah, so and so. Like the airships thing. Who knows? Oh, what man, that's all about. We need more airships. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> maybe like some HG Wells type characters. Yeah. That could I mean, be that's fun. fun. You can get you know get um like Nemo in there and yeah, well, there you go. That, that that's not cool. HG Wells. That's Burn, but. Yeah. Have we done any, like, Gulliver's Travels or anything like that? No, but they showed pictures of that. Were, were there? Okay. There were little Pusians in one of the books. Okay, okay. And then there were... Uh, uh, like Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I don't remember what else. I don't... Yeah, there were a lot of them. Real quick. They were like, oh, yeah. A lot of fun Easter eggs. Well, we got Dracula coming around and... Oh, did you see... No, I didn't know. I just figured they could. They I could. Went, I could when, see that. When, um, when I tried to figure out who they were and then... Charming had that wooden stake. Steak. I'm like, oh, Dracula. No, I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think there's some very, really interesting potential. I mean, this half season really energized me for once upon a time. I, it again. did. I was, I was, yes, I was kind of like, ah, oh, I don't know where they're going. Not only did that make me feel like they accomplished things and move things forward this season, half season, but. After this finale, I'm like, I'm ready to watch more. Yeah. I mean, Hyde's going to be an interesting character, I think. Did you notice in the end scene when Emma and Hook are having their conversation but leading up to make-out time, um, did you <laughs> notice, like, in the store in the background, there was one shot with, like, it was a, two of them, and the store in the background had a bridal dress oh, in, did the, it? in the window. Yes. Oh, nice. So I, I was wondering, is that force? You know, <laughs> is that foreshadowing or are they just kind of playing with uh, our emotions? Be, it would be nice, you know, because even best of worlds, once it's probably not going to get more than two more seasons. Yeah. I mean, next one might be its last. I mean, it's just possible. from ratings wise and stuff. Ratings wise, yeah, it could be the last. And uh, I mean, 
I was happy too. Speaking of that scene, I was happy that one. I am I'd, I'd enjoy the teases for the next season, but at the same time, also sort of happy that it's a much more like happy, uh, yeah. you know, kind of like, finale. Yeah, they, they they settled all the main conflicts of between our main characters. They're basically except for Bell. Yes, or, for Bell. but you know, everyone you know, everyone's kind of forgiven each other and talked things out and mm-hmm. are happy. With, and it was fun. It was like if you know, if they didn't get a new season. It's a decent ending. Yeah. I mean, where do you think they're sending Rumpel? They can get... Where he... Oh, that... He, I know. That's interesting. Yeah, that's true. Where he, he was going to go to some new land. So... Um, I don't know. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't know how many... I mean, that sort of setup makes you think it's a fairy tale location we've heard of, not another new place. I don't know. But because because, because Rumpel never would have known about it. Because well, he, that's true. And so... And Hyde gets from all kinds of places. Yeah. So it could be a new location. I bet. I, I'm thinking it's got to be possibly. So it was just the biggest thing next season is if they got so much new potential, mm-hmm. juggling it so it doesn't become overwhelming. Overwhelming, and they've done a really good. They've tr- kept trimming the season. Like you know, they would send snow, uh, snow home. Mm-hmm. You know, just because she wasn't doing anything, or yeah. you know, they <laughs> killed, killed off Rumble, kill, Robin Hood. Robin Hood, Arthur. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. The plot lines that they're like, I think they meant to do more with, or just maybe they just want to get a Camelot in there, and then it just, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they've trimmed down, they've, and then so they can build up again, basically. It's yeah. kind of what it feels like. Yeah, I don't know what they'll do with Merida and stuff. Maybe they will just show up. Yeah. But, you know, there's some people just hanging out, which are fine. You almost just got to slowly move them out so you don't notice them. Well, and I thought it was funny, too. I'm I'm very curious sometimes about the population of Storybrooke. <laughs> like... Like, we're gonna send you back to Jennifer Forest and Camelot and stuff, and then when we come back to Storybook, you all be here. It's like, is there some people that that prefer one or the other, or yeah. do all of them migrate at the same time? I'm I'm and, very curious in the dynamic. And, and maybe that's you know, obviously, it sounds like all the Camelot people are gone. Yeah, which is a good way of working them out. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe they they just got rid of people. You know, yeah, could it, so we get all kinds of new people in there. Yeah, and I suppose that's entirely possible. So it, it almost it's very interesting. In some ways, we were talking about the the season setup is just weird, but really the the whole finishing off Hades and then having this worked really well. Yeah, it's I mean, it's almost, an, oh, like a setup for this. Like the whole Hades thing was just to get that crystal. <laughs> I mean, and I mean the Zelina thing, and it was so fun to have Zelina just as like a snarky sidekick. <laughs> yes, and I think. I have a feeling she's going to be that now. I, I mean, I, I remember before wondering, like, what are they going to do with Regina now that she doesn't have a Robin Hood? Well, now she's got a sister, and that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. And Zelina's kind of fun now that she's not utterly insane. Yeah. The tricky thing will still be, you know, you want to still have them both be doing something. You know, yeah. you don't want Zelina to just be a snarky sidekick. Yeah, yeah. So, and I guess that was another thing about that. You know, Henry got a lot of stuff to do, but they were all this. Your main group of people was all running around. They're just having fun. Not, well, I mean, they're not having fun, but it looks <laughs> like it's just they're on an adventure. They're outside of town. You know, they're on a quest. Mm-hmm. They're talking to each other. It, you know, it was just entertaining. Yeah, it was surprisingly good. I mean, yeah. we were nervous going into yeah, this. We one, were but... that preview was horrible, <laughs> but we had a good time. So cool. Did we forget anything, guys? The one season Zach's not here. Half season Zach's not here. Maybe he should stay out of it more often. <laughs> <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> You're jinxing us, Zach. Does he listen to these? I don't know. No. I'll have to tell him to. <laughs> so I, I don't. I think that was most of it. Yeah. It was just you know, just lots of little well, touches. I I yeah. Yeah. Lot, lots of nice touches. I mean, just the look of the, of the new, you know, the manor, or the which, hospital was cool. Which I suspect, you know, besides having new people, you know, this also means more excuses for flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Well, they always want the flashbacks. They always need to engineer something. Which is interesting. It. This season didn't have much in the way of flashbacks. Uh, I guess they did. Well, I guess they did. I guess they didn't notice them as much. But they were either really helpful or I didn't care about them at all. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say uh, most of them integrated pretty well. Um, there weren't as many, it's yeah. true. Partly because there weren't as many new characters in the Underworld yeah. arc, like Hercules. Yeah, that was a l- that was one of the weaker ones. Yeah, and that was but that was one of the few like new characters that well, you then, like like the yeah, like the Zelina or Regina flashback was really yeah. good. Mm-hmm. The Emma one was okay when she randomly killed a person. <laughs> um, got a person killed. Got okay, whatever. <laughs> you wouldn't be nitpicky like that. Um <laughs> So, yeah, you know, it should be entertaining at the very least. Yeah. Well, hopefully. 
Well, and it should be since there's like nothing else on ABC now for me to watch. <laughs> well, okay, no, there's Agents of Shield. I forgot about that. So, is this the end of our hijack for quite a while? Yes, for at the very least the summer. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We're not showing. We're not starting any new shows. We're not going back to Lost for a while yet, like we We've said. Gotta go. Not yet. <laughs> You can always listen to us, though, at our regular podcast, Derailed Trains of Thoughts, oh. which is oh. well, just at derailedtrainsofthought.blogspot.com. iTunes, Stitcher, blah, blah, blah. Yes, go to- check that out if you've been listening to this, because it's quite an entertaining podcast. <laughs> and Weekly Hijack will be back eventually. It will be back. It's like the end of like a Marvel movie. So-and-so will return. <laughs> Weekly Hijack will return. Well, thank you for writing with us. Yes. Until next time. Until whenever. This is Tim. This is Nick. Bye. Bye.